Now, in the last quarter of last year, we saw many parts of, especially the capital, are washed with billboards of very scary looking masks. You know, we woke up to, to that mask and, and a lot of people were asking, who is the man behind the mask? And what is the agenda behind this mask campaign? And what is the end objective? Well, a few days ago, we got to know the man behind the mask. Today, what we're going to do, yeah, that's the mask you see there. Very scary with plenty of people on it as well. I don't know if it's the same person who's been replicated in all of these images that we're seeing on the screen right now. We're going to find out the naked truth of the man in the mask and the vision behind this new force. Because the mask came with new force in there. The man behind the mask has finally been revealed. Nana Kwame Bediakon. We call him Cheda. He's with us in the studio this morning. It's good to have you. Thank you. Wow. You are the most wanted in Ghana. You know that. <laughs> have they told Is that you? that so? Yes. Should I be wanted? Well, what do you think? At least right now we know the face behind the mask. It's great to have you this morning. Thank you very much. I was hoping Thank that when you entered, you would have the mask and then you just remove it in grand style. You know, no, no. For, for us to see you eventually. The mask is unveiled. And that's what matters the most. The I'm mask here. has been unveiled. But you run a very, very impactful campaign with that mask and, and got a lot of people talking, in fact, and um, wondering exactly what, what was going on behind the mask and so on. Tell me about the, the entire mask campaign and, and the billboards that we saw. So first of all, I think that, you know, black people globally have lost their identity. We have identity crisis, you know, we're labeled in different countries, mm -hmm. black British, black American, black African, Afro-American, so many things. But then when we go back to the past, it all started with a mask. <laughs> when we go back to history, where power started from, you know, the mask was some kind of paint that we painted our faces with. Mm -hmm. And then when you went to war, everybody's face was painted yes. as the mask. And you have to be very careful who you fight because it could be your sister, your mother, or your own family. Mm -hmm. So that made us very careful and very focused, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of what we have to do and who we have to attack. But at the same time, we were anonymous. Absolutely. You know, and I think that's what sometimes the black society should portray ourselves to the world. Mm -hmm. You know, we should be anonymous based on our capacity and our ability, what we can do to change this world. Mm -hmm. And then when it's finally done, we unveil ourselves. I see. But th th that strategy that you took and, and give me an idea of the explanation behind it. But what was the message behind the, the, the mask and, you know, the billboards that we saw? Well, first of all, I wanted to talk to the country and I wanted to find out the mindset of the country that are they looking at the messenger or they're looking for the message. So I got my answers. <laughs> no, what, what answer did you get? Well, I got my answers because, yes, because, you know, I think the message sometimes is more important than the messenger. Because mm -hmm. the message is where the fruit is, is where the wisdom is, is where the knowledge is, is where the actual information that is being delivered is. So we need to look into that. We need to find out, okay, so the mask. <laughs> what is the mask saying? And mm -hmm. if it's a new force, what is, who is new force and what do they want to do and all of that. But I think people were more curious about just who is behind the mask. Well, because... You cannot also discount the theory that the messenger has an impact on the message as well. Absolutely. So, but then that could, so, be, that could be their marketing point. You see, marketing simply means campaign in the political industry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the same word. But then when you come to the corporate world, they call it marketing or branding. So, and every marketing has a strategy behind it. So politics, it's governed by strategies. It's built by strategies. And so I think that is just the new forces strategy. To the, the new forces strategy to introduce yourself to the country. I see, but what was was the what, what, why the choice of that mask specifically? I mean, to, to some people, seeing that just a face and on, on a number of billboards across the capital and even beyond, people woke up to it was scary. 
I mean, what, what went to the choice of that particular mask? Can I ask you a question, Fred? Do. In the history of politics, have you ever seen a man in a mask? Well, no, not in Ghana, at least. In the world? Well, there could have been. I don't know. But you don't know. So this is the first time you're seeing one. The fact that I don't know doesn't mean that there's not. This I am the first asking time. you a question. <laughs> you haven't seen one, I guess. Well, not not until now. You must be proud that you're sitting in front of one now. <laughs> no, I'm happy that <laughs> it's the I've, first time. I've seen the man behind the mask. Because wow. when I drive in, around town and I see the mask, obviously, the question that will come to mind is, who is this? Exactly. And then we started seeing people as well now replicating the, the whole idea. Was it that you gave that chance to others to also put themselves in there? Because there was one person who was thought to be the one behind the mask, and he came out to say he's not the one, but we saw him in a picture with the mask. I wouldn't do that. I, I mean, I wouldn't interfere with the branding, with the marketing, with the campaign. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as you see, we live in a country that people get away with a lot of stuff. And that's just because of the level of our um, judiciary systems and legislation. It's mm -hmm. not quite effective, you know, in terms of defamation, in terms of uh, encroachment, in terms of, you know, um, entering into people's privacy. You know, we don't take these things serious, but I wouldn't do that. I think people just became an opportunist or they, they, someone became an opportunist and saw that, you know, the billboard, it's created a lot of um, uh, attraction mm -hmm. and wanted to take that for themselves. I see. So the other people we saw with the mask was not with the approval of you? No, at all. I have nothing to do with them. I mean, they definitely have other interests. So I think I'll leave that for the country to decide. So they know, just capitalize on the, the efficiency of this mass campaign, and then they put their faces behind it? Absolutely. I mean, you I... had one I, doctor, something. I mean, I'm sure you've seen some of the people. I saw some, but, you know, I just didn't want to, you know, waste my time, you know, trying to resolve um, something that is not that important to me for an opportunist. You know, I just you thought call that them I, opportunists. I think so. But they were, someone also say that they were also leveraging on what you had created, the anonymous image behind it. Obviously, if we, you were not willing to come out at that time, anybody else could just jump in and assume, in fact, impersonate the person, the real person behind the mask. If you think it's right for them to do so, then so be it. Now, I recall that for some time, a number of the billboards were pulled down. Absolutely. Because of, at the time, the, the information we had was that there was miscommunication as to it, the exact reason why you are even going to pay for those billboard uh, spaces. What was the, st the real story behind that? The pulling down of these masked billboards? I mean, I think it was professionally done and it wasn't based on vandalization you know if someone was there to um, maybe destroy their uh, the billboard they'll probably throw a paint on it or try to cut it but you know it was carefully removed in a few times so oh, some of them were pulled down oh, then we yeah. saw people pulling them down not as professionally as you would want well, to I mean let, let from us... our research and what we saw it was all professionally pulled down you know, it was, and it was 11 or 13 of them. Mm -hmm. The thing is, I mean, we should respect people's investment as a country, you know, and there are legal structures and frames around all of these True. marketing spaces. And if someone has a billboard, you know, this is Ghana. It's a country that is governed by democratic uh, rules, regulations, and I believe that we have our rights and everything. So we should really make sure that we don't sort of turn our country out to be like a looting country, you know, because Ghana is very peaceful. It's one of the first countries to have gained their independence in Africa. We're very respected because of our political stability, our economical stability, and we should try and manage and maintain that image because, you see, that's how the world sees us. And that's the value that people will give us. And then if we sit down for just you know, people to be doing things without putting the law into consideration and without us also, you know, um, putting them in the right places, then everybody will start to do what they like.
You know, uh, we don't want the country to drift. We want it to stay at, a set, at it is. And um, we want the reputation that we have built in the past to take us along in the future, in the next years of coming. We want Ghana to grow. We want to, to develop ourselves. We want to add value to our people. And we want to be known globally that we're doing something great. So some of these things, I think we should relook at them. And, and but but, them but the, the, the reason behind pulling them down, was it right that you had not fulfilled some requirements and that the exact reason why you, you even paid for those billboards were not declared or known? That was the report at the time when these billboards were being pulled down. I don't think that was the report. We fulfilled all the requirements. We made our payments. I, in fact, the company that we gave them the contract, they were third or fourth on the marketing uh, list as, mm -hmm. you know, fourth best. And after that, they came to number one, the blue pools, <laughs> because, you know, it was professionally done, you know, on time. You know, people were even saying it was done by AI, but it was just how we structured it. You know, and like I said already, I mm -hmm. mean, we paid for it. And uh, these are polls that they have also gotten permits from the Metropolitan. So, you know, everything is in place. And we're talking about the country and how people just get up to say whatever they like you know, to do whatever they like. This is a country that even our people can boo our president in front of foreign world, and nobody speaks about it. And I thought that was very disrespectful. So there are certain things that needs to be straightened, you know, and I think some of these things that new force have uh, introduced into the country should give the country a clearer picture of some of the things that we need to look at. You know, that's what I see. I don't think that we have crossed the line or broken any rules concerning uh, marketing or putting up billboards. I, no, there is nothing as such. And if there was, then the whole billboards across the nation. How many billboards did you mount in, in Accra and, and beyond? I don't know, but it's quite a lot of them. Because some in the other regions? All the regions. Across all the 16 regions? All the regions. Our target is the regions. So we want to deal with the nation. We don't want to deal with the city. <laughs> we are interested in the country. You know, we are interested in the But people. you don't have an idea of how many billboards you have procured or paid for. Your face on it, the, the mask. I wouldn't say that I have paid for, you know, that is too much for me. I think, you know, the entity. You know what? The new force is an entity. Yes, the, yes, we're a team, we're a group, we're people. You know, I can't do this on my own. But yes, who, who is funding this new force agenda? Should we be talking about funding, or should we be talking about the new force or the mask? I because tell you what, with you know, that, the reason why I'm, I ask this question is that the the funding of now you are getting into politics. Mm -hmm. You you are no more. Um, the mask. Mm -hmm. we, we know you, mm -hmm. and your intentions are known now. Mm -hmm. The funding of political party activities is a big deal in this country. Mm -hmm. We know, based on some research, that mm -hmm. nefarious businessmen, Galamsey operators, are even funding political party activities in this country. Mm -hmm. That's why I ask you, who is funding the new force movement? Do you think every politician, even though I'm not one, goes out there to talk about who is funding them? Well, you're supposed to based well, on requirements by the Electoral Commission? For me, I think at the right time, if I feel like there are people who have supported or donated to us, I would clearly uh, declare it. You know, I think that's the right way. You know, we believe that the political principles and the chronicles, you know, that constipate together to make or to build a government, mm -hmm. it should be transparent. You know, it should be something that the people are aware of and they're in control of. You know, I, I would say to you right now that the New Force, the New Africa Foundation, and all of these things that I'm behind, it's, uh, it's my investment that I am putting in there to get to a place so people can see my vision, people can see the contribution that I'm bringing here. So but I am not interested in disclosing figures. So, so that's what I wanted to understand. So for now, you are the only one funding the new force and the new Africa Foundation. 
for now, yes, I'll call it as my team. That's my team that exists. You know, we have New Africa Foundation, we have New Falls. I have quite a lot of institutions or, or establishment in the country. I'm so. reconciling that with the earlier statement you made about you made that some some donations had come in to help you. I, don't, I didn't say that. Let me correct you. Mm -hmm. I said if there are any donations okay. or support, I would transparently declare it. It's meaning that if people come to genuinely help me mm -hmm. and support me with what I'm doing, that's what I'm going to do because I feel like, you know, I'm going to go to the public and I'm going to ask the public to support me in what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And not only in finances, but in morals, in many other things that can be supportive, I will appreciate it. I see. Now, we see, we understand that there, there are a few more billboards that are even yet to come up. You paid for so many more, <laughs> and you are yet to mount some of them. True? Well, we spend quite a lot of time on the billboards, right? Yes. I think you see a lot of them. Because so it's, 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 it's helped you achieve that objective, has it not? Based on your own an analysis, I, the reason why you even put up all of these billboards in the first place. I don't think our marketing has been just about the billboard. It's been a lot of different awareness that we're creating, you know, and a lot of different things that we're initiating, you know, which mm. is becoming very effective in the political industry because that is not the norm. Right. So the billboard is just one of them. But I also see it as one part of marketing. It's an outdoor marketing. You have the media marketing. You have different types of media marketing. You have traditional marketing, you know, which is what we're doing now. Mm -hmm. We're on TV, you know, so the local people can see us. Then you have the digital marketing, you know, which is something that is more relative to the 20th century. You know, people, there are also audiences there that understand. And then you have all sort of other marketing, you know. I, again, I said I call it campaign. So this whole thing is not about billboards. It's about the agenda. It's about the vision. It's about the mission. It's about the reason why we're here. And let's talk about the reason why you're here, the other reason why you're here. A few days ago, mm -hmm. I mean, very well publicized event, the convention, the convention. Mm -hmm. On the day of this particular event, something happened. But before we even get there, let's, let's get a clear understanding of the intent behind this, the convention igniting the voices of Africa. What was the reasoning behind putting together this program that never was in the first place? Thank you. Thank you. So I get inspiration from a lot of things. I get inspiration from poverty. I get inspiration from our leaders. You know, the past leaders, even the future leaders, I can see them. And um, I was looking back into the 60s, mm -hmm. and I realized that the greatest people in the 60s were the likes of Martin Luther, Malcolm X, Kwame Nkrumah, mm -hmm. Patrice Lumumba, and they all sort of always organized, you know, great people to bring them into one place, mm -hmm. you know, and then send a message. And the message was like transcribed, transcended, you know, and uh, became popular with a nation or a society. So I got that inspiration from the likes of Martin Luther, the likes of Kwame Nkrumah, and I said that, let me bring the 60s back into the 20s. Mm -hmm. You know, I felt like it's been 60 years, and today the leaders of the youth are no more this sort of leaders, but rather musicians and footballers. You know, they have become the leaders, but they are stars, and we need to respect them as stars. Mm -hmm. So I decided to bring four of the greatest or some of the most greatest voices currently in Africa together. Mm -hmm. And so I picked two from the active, as an activist, and I picked two as politicians. Okay, that's and Julius Malema and uh, Professor Pielo Lumumba. You classify them as the activists. Uh, no, Julius Malema is or not Peter, an activist. I would say more as Dr. Ari Connor and then Pielo. Uh, more activists. But then when you look at the background of Malema, it's politics. When mm -hmm. you look at the background of Peter Obi, he is the new, um, um, the new face of politics, you know, mm -hmm. uh, how he caused a wonder within a year, you know. And so I decided to bring them together. And then first of all, you know, educate, motivate, inspire the youth, the leaders, 
and talk about national governance, continental governance, the future of Africa, where we're going, you know, just to spark a new sort of audience with what they're looking for that they haven't been getting in the past. So I had to also mix the musicians, mm -hmm. you know, to perform so it just doesn't become a raw speech. And mm -hmm. I planned for the convention uh, with my charity, uh, which is the foundation. I planned that's for the that. New Africa Foundation. New Africa Foundation, okay. because that's what we do. We have set up to be the foundation that builds nation. So we do different things. As mm -hmm. you can see, we go to Turkey and we shelter them. We will go to uh, Volta. When the crisis are there, we will shelter them. We'll give them food. You know, we will go to Chief Imam and try to bridge the religion uh, between Muslims and Christians. So, you know, there's more peace in the country. That's, this, these are the things that the charity does. And so I thought that regardless my ambition of running for president, it's also very important for me to bring such leaders into the country to highlight the country so the continent will see the country, the value of the country. They will remember that this is the first country that gained the independence in Africa. This is the first country that moved Africans to fight for their independence. And it's the same country that have started to speak about international continental governance, the future of our youth, talking about our resources, the, the, the human resource and, and the mineral resources, mm -hmm. bringing it all together and then sparking the spirits of these Africans up to realize is that 2024 is our year to change our continent, our country, and our people. Well, but uh, all these speakers that you brought together couldn't deliver the message that they, they, they came with. The objective you put this together was, was not realized because on the morning, in fact, it was later in the day, on the 7th of, of January, that we got this letter, and we're going to put that on the screen right now, the revocation of the permit for you to use the Black Star Square for the Black Star Line Festival. That's what was on the screen. Then this came from the office of the president, revoking immediately the permission granted you per the letter dated 11 November 2023, which approved your request to use the Black Star Square for the above event. And the above event is Black Star Line Festival. Great. Now, they said the decision was because of some unforeseen state events scheduled for the same place and time of this particular uh, convention event. And under the circumstance, they've refunded your 10,000 Ghana cities to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's no such thing as this. If you bring the letter back down so we can get a clarity. Uh, let's let's come down a bit. Yeah, okay. the Black Star Line Festival. Bring what, what, it, bring is that the... the just let, just bring it down. down a bit. Yes. Okay. Yes. So first of all, my question is, how many offices do we have for the president in the country? Because it looks like it's two or three. But if it's one, then we have different information. So if you have a copy mm -hmm. of our receipt and the letter and the permit that the same office, uh, president, uh, office of the president has issued for New Africa Foundation, I would like us to put it. Office. First of all, mm -hmm. excuse me, first of all, the receipt that we got is 30,000. So if the government is showing 10,000, it's minus two thirds. Is this how the whole country behave in everything that we do with our taxes, with everything that we do? Because we've paid the money and you've issued us a receipt of 30,000 cities. You've paid 30,000 cities. Yes, and then you have 10,000 cities showing. We've also paid under the name of New Africa Foundation mm -hmm. and you've given us the permit, but you're using Black Star uh, line, line some, so, something. So. Why don't you bring us Okay, so there. this is it. So this no, no, let's sound. calm down a bit. Okay. So this is from the, so this has a request to use Black Star Square, New Africa Foundation, Diaspora Affairs. Th this is what the office this of the is, president. This is the receipt. The Diaspora Affairs. This, there's a letter. There are three documents. Okay, we'll show all of them. They said, so this one says, this is to acknowledge the receipt of payment for the Black Star Square venue to be used for a program for the 2nd to the 8th of January, 2024. Payment details are as follows. Use of the venue, 5,000 a day yes. for six days, yes. 30,000. Yes. Service charge has been waived, waived off because you didn't pay service charge. So you paid 30,000 for uh, a, a almost seven day event. 
No, it's not seven day event. It's because you need six days to put up all the stages, all the okay. work. So you have to pay for the days that you're going to be doing the work. That's during the preparatory period. Exactly. Okay. So they were aware from the second and to the eighth. Of course, they knew the event is on the seventh. Okay. But they, on the eighth is when you tear down mm -hmm. what you have put together so that's really what it is let's go to the letter please. i see so but in in let's let's pull the letter out that, can you that come down a bit because so, you see it, it it this is um so this this is the temporary receipt yes so um, this is from the office of the president again it says this is a temporary receipt for payment of the accra independence square venue for 2nd january 2024 to 8 january 2024 can i ask you an a amount question? of thirty thousand is paid and an or, and an original receipt will be issued by state protocol department. Yes. Can I? And the person's name is there. Yes. So this was a temporary receipt. Yes. Now, can I ask you a mm -hmm. question? Do we think that there's another office that we have in Ghana that's for the president with the same stamp? Yes. Because, you know, I, I am kind of confused and I'm trying to ask the nation. I want the nation to consider, you know, uh, consider or put yourself in my shoes. Because, you know, I am going by the law. Pay me this stamp receipt, this that, and then I go and invest three hundred thousand dollars into an event, into something that will inspire the nation. You the spend youth. three hundred thousand dollars. Yes, yes, and then they just come and tear it down. There's a letter too. So this is the cash receipt. Yes, and New York Africa Foundation. So that's the name you applied to use the place. Everything, for, not there, Black Star Line Festival. No, 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 no. There's, so it, there's a letter. So thirty thousand CDs, rental of Independence Square. Yes, and there's a letter that said that, yes, we have the place. So it's all there. But why did they issue the letter in the name of Black Star something something? Now, let me tell you what mm -hmm. I see funny here. Okay, this Black Star something something. Black happened. Star yes, they had an event here last year, last two years, okay, on the 6th or on the 7th. Mm -hmm. And then that same people probably thought that they were going to do it the year yeah, after. Yeah. But they kind of held it for them. So I called the people that were behind it, which is Chance the Rapper mm -hmm. and um, Vic, Vic, mm -hmm. Vic Menta. And they said, no, 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 we're not using it. We're in Jamaica this year. So they sent an email to them oh, right. saying that when they're not using, using it the place. so we went in and then we finally got the place okay mm -hmm. now i want to compare what we did the convention to an event like um uh global citizen mm -hmm. global citizen was supposed to highlight ghana as one of the best places okay. in africa and a country that is peaceful to hold such events i must say that these people were extremely successful they raised $4 billion mm -hmm. in doing three of these events in three different countries. Mm -hmm. However, they did not leave anything behind for us Ghanaians. They took the global citizens with them. They took the donations with them. But let's see how Ghana embraced them. The whole country went. These white people that had come from somewhere else in the world to do an event in our country, our leaders were there. Our elders were there. Our youth were there. We supported the event. We gave speeches to back the event. Now, let's come to the convention. We brought four Africans who have spoken and spent three decades of their lives fighting for a better Africa. We brought them into Ghana to speak to the youth and to speak to the continent. The person that was behind the event is a Ghanaian. Mm -hmm. And the company or the group or entity, the NGO that invested in this initiative, it's also an, establ an establishment that is from Ghana, New Africa. Now watch how all of us were attacked. Mm -hmm. The speakers were attacked. The speakers were attacked. I in a, in a way, I'm um, not attacked as violently, but they were stopped. It was cancelled. Mm -hmm. You know, we were restricted. We were pushed away from doing it. So the point I'm trying to make here is that when is Africans going to wake up that we are destroying our own? We are stopping our own. We are against our own. Anything that is good 
that is amongst ourselves. We find problems with it, even from our product that is made by ourselves to mm -hmm. everything. I think we need to start to change our mindset. That's why I'm using the two events to explain to you that the foreign event is embraced. The okay. foreign event is accepted. The foreign event is appreciated. But the local or the continental uh, initiative, it's always It's restricted. a fair point, but, let, but let's establish a few things. So first, you say that the heading of this letter communicating the revocation of the permit to you is, is not consistent, it's wrong. Or you didn't apply to use the Black Star Square under the name of Black Star Line Festival. You've just... You, applied as the new africa foundation you just read it Fred. have yes to have a program on the seventh you just read everything so that heading there is wrong it is it is it has nothing to do with you nothing and the secondly you paid thirty thousand cities i did not pay ten thousand and no one has given me any money in fact so the ten thousand has not even been given to you. No, 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 no. I mean, I wouldn't even touch it. Who will spend three hundred thousand, which is over three million cities, and somebody will tell you to come and take ten thousand, and you go and take it? So what? You're for? not going to take the ten thousand cities they give, want to give. Well, to you. look, I'm just letting you know, Fred, mm -hmm. that they haven't even given me the money. First of all, uh -huh. please listen to the news. Listen to what you look at. What you're seeing. Mm -hmm. Listen to what people are saying. Put it together, and you judge it for yourself that is there one office for the president that delivers this letter or there are different offices? Because it's clearly, you can see that there are two different letters. There are two different receipts. So somebody, the person that signs this is H.M. Wood. The other person that signs the other one is something, something, something. Is it that people are just using the president's face to do these things? Or are they, because it can tarnish the country. You know, mm -hmm. people are seeing that, you know, Ghana is against some of these things and these kind of leaders coming here and canceling it. And I don't think, you know, we should be sitting here and just blaming the president's office or the government. I think we should see us as a nation that are we doing the right thing? Are we no, supporting but, I mean, our in this people? specific are... instance, it's a particular event. I understand the approach you're taking in trying to generalize the concern, mm -hmm. but this is a specific instance an action taken by a specific office. So if we're talking about somebody taking responsibility for what happened on that day, mm -hmm. you cannot look beyond the office of the president. Absolutely. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Absolutely. As a nation, we have to do You want the office of the president to be answering questions about this? I, I haven't asked the office of the president to answer any question, and I'm not here to fight power. <laughs> you know, I just think that we as a nation should look at these things and start to correct things for ourselves. It's fair. You know, we want to live in a fair world. Mm -hmm. We want our children to grow up, not to do such things to people. We want our children to grow up to support our nation, to support our society. That's what I stand for. I believe in me and I believe in the people like me. You know, if I've built a fortune, I built it in a soil that I was raised on. And I respect my country. I love the people. I love the country. You know, there might be issues with the government today, but tomorrow we can fix it. There might be issues with the government in the past, or there might be great things that have been done by the government in the past. We should look at it and then use that to do better. You know, we should learn from the mistakes of the greatest leaders and then correct ourselves and mature from that. So that's the kind of person that I am. I've learned. I'm learning. Okay, so 